Hi, welcome to today's video where I'm going to be looking at covalent structures. So if you haven't already, I suggest you have a look at the video on covalent bonds. Just have an understanding of what a covalent bond is. Um, this video is supposed to build upon that uh, and to introduce you to the two main ways that covalent um, bonds exist within structures. Okay. So the first way is what we call molecular. So we can have molecular um, structures or we can have continuous lattice structures. So when we were looking at ionic bonds, in that video I talked about the fact that ionic substances exist as three-dimensional ionic lattices. And what that means is there was a big um, network of atoms that linked together, and that was resulting in them having very high melting points. Covalent substances um, operate a little bit differently. So the first thing I'm going to go through is what we call the molecular structure. So covalent molecules, and this word molecules means a small unit, um, are a bit different from ionic compounds. So a molecule, there's lots of examples of different molecules. So an example is something like water, H2O, that's a molecule. All right, you've also got something like uh, carbon dioxide, CO2. You could have glucose, C6H12O6. Okay, uh, you could have nitric acid, HNO3. Okay, um, all of these are molecules. So what that means is that they all exist independently of each other. So if we have a beaker of water here, for example, all right, so we've got water in here. That means within this beaker of water, however many mils it is, we've got all these little individual water molecules, okay? Whereas for an ionic substance, these were all bonded together via um, ionic bonds. Here, these actually exist and are bonded together by what are called secondary bonds, okay? So all these little molecules um, operate individually. Within the molecule, there is a covalent bond. So with water, it's a hydrogen to oxygen to hydrogen like that. So we have covalent bonds, which are this one here and this one here, okay? They're covalent bonds. They exist by the overlap or sharing of valence electrons. But within a solution of water, we don't have a big three-dimensional structure. We have individual molecules. And so that's what we call molecular, a molecular structure. So when you're looking at chemistry and we're focusing on chemistry in terms of learning it in school, there's a couple of the main shapes that you need to know for molecular structures. Okay, so I'm gonna go through five main molecular structure shapes. I'm not gonna go through how to draw them, that's a separate video, but I'm just gonna show you that we can have molecules that exist in different shapes. And I'm gonna use some of those ones we had before. So that one water that we had actually exists like this. Now, that sort of shape for a molecule is called a V-shape. Sometimes you'll hear people refer to it as bent as well, but it's what we call a V-shaped molecule because we have a central atom and then we have two atoms either side which bends the molecule, so it's in a V-shape. So that's a V-shaped molecule. You can have straight ones as well. So something like hydrochloric acid is a really good example. Okay, Because that's all in a line, we call that linear. Okay, and they're, the, they're very simple types. The next one I'm gonna look at is where you have a central atom, like a phosphorus, and then you actually have three atoms spaced around it, but they're below, okay? Um, this is, um, looks a little bit like a pyramid if you actually built it with a molecular atoms, because you've gotta remember these are three-dimensional shapes. So you've got a central phosphorus and you've got three chlorines that sit around it. When you put them together, that actually creates a bit of a, and I'll see if I can show it here. So you get this triangle down the bottom of your base here, okay? So this is called trigonal pyramid. So, almost got to spell that for a minute. So trigonal means three, pyramid is obviously the shape of it. So it's your pyramid structure and it's trigonal because there are three atoms down the bottom. So phosphorus trichloride is what we call a trigonal pyramid structure. You can have three atoms around something, like a boron, for example, but this time they actually equally space themselves around in three dimensions. Okay, and there's a reason for that which I go into in the drawing video, but I'm not gonna go through now. But this time, because all three of those are equally spaced around, it's still trigonal because there's three of them, but now, if you actually make the molecule, you'll see it has an axis of symmetry down the middle, and they're all in the same plane. So we call this a trigonal planar molecule. The final one is where you have a central atom. So I'm gonna look at a carbon here, for example, and you have atoms which are again equally spaced around it. 
Now, the reason we put these going down instead of straight out is again, because it's three dimensional. And if you make this, you'll see that they actually fit and they're about 120 degrees between each of the bonds. So they're not 90 degrees, about a bent, but it's three dimensional. So there are four of these around the central atom. So four is given the prefix tetra. So it's a tetrahedral arrangement. So in terms of um, covalent molecules, these are the five main structure types you can have, okay? These exist because the molecules do not form big three-dimensional structures, okay? They exist independently in small forms, only held together by weak secondary bonds. So because they're all um, quite small and independent, it doesn't take a lot of energy to break one molecule away from the other, which is why they have low melting points and boiling points, and they're generally gases or liquids at room temperature. So you need to learn those five shapes, okay? But there are a couple of instances where the covalent substances exist as what's called a continuous lattice. So I'm just going to show you the two main examples of where they exist like that. So the first continuous lattice I'm going to refer to um, are what we call allotropes of carbon. So carbon is in group four, it can form four bonds around it, it can get a really nice tetrahedral arrangement around its central atom. So this allows carbon st structures to sometimes exist as three-dimensional instead of just as molecules. An allotrope is something that is it's just a different form or a different version with a different structure. So some of the common um, forms of carbon you might not be aware about, um, aware of that these were actually covalent lattices, are things like graphite or diamond. Okay? Now, both of those are made up purely of carbon, but they exist slightly differently. So graphite, in graphite you have these six-membered ring structures for carbon. So it exists, sets itself up like this. You may notice that they don't all have four bonds and there's a reason for that. But you end up with these six-membered ring structures which kind of sit on top of each other like this, all right? And this keeps going and you get what's called these sheets of carbon, all right? So these keep going in each direction. I'm not gonna waste time by drawing them all out now. Between the sheets, you actually have these sort of bonds that exist. And those bonds exist between them because we've got free electrons. Because the carbons don't have all of their um, four um, electrons taken up in bonds, we have these electrons that exist between the graphite sheets. So you get these long sheets, okay, of six-membered carbon rings, which are quite strong but these sheets exist with free electrons in them. So graphite is actually one of the rare substances which conducts electricity because you've got these free electrons between the sheets. It's quite a high melting point substance. It can be quite hard as well because you've got lots of these covalent bonds between the carbon atoms. Diamond on the other hand is a little bit different. Diamond exists and in a now your more traditional tetrahedral arrangement of your carbon atoms. So you don't have any free electrons this time but what you've got instead is these carbons, and this is a bit harder to show in two dimension, but you've got all these carbon atoms which bond up and you just get this big three dimensional structure of carbons going in all directions. Lots and lots and lots of bonds. That's why it's really, really strong. It's really, really hard and it has a really, really high melting point. However, it doesn't have any of the free electrons that graphite does. So carbon in the diamond form doesn't conduct electricity, okay? But because both of these exist as three-dimensional um, structures, they both have high melting points, which is different from a molecular structure for a covalent substance, which, because it exists as a small molecule, is easily broken apart and has a low melting point. Uh, the other main form of where you come across a continuous um, lattice that has um, covalent structures or bonds is in silicon. So you can get silicon or you can get silicon dioxide. And there's actually a whole range of different structures that you can get for silicates. Most of them are built around this tetrahedral arrangement, the same as you do for diamond. So for pure silica, it's actually the same. Instead of a carbon, you have a silicon in there. For silicon dioxide, that exists, if we're talking about pure silicon dioxide or sand, you've got this general structure, but you've got oxygens in the middle and it actually goes in three dimensions like this so you get these long chains that go up and out and all around so that's why sand has a very high melting point all right it's why it doesn't dissolve because it's such a big structure okay there's lots and lots of bonds there okay so those are what examples of what we call continuous lattices that's a different type of structure for a covalent bonding type of molecule 
all right, or covalent substance, I should say. So there's molecules, which are small, independent, low, um, low melting and boiling points. And then you've got a couple of examples of continuous lattices, which have very big three-dimensional structures, bit more now like ionic substances have, or metallic substances, so they have much higher melting points. All right, hopefully this has been helpful for you. I would encourage you that probably the next thing from this video that you wanna be having and looking at is how to draw molecular substances, those five structures we went through, of V-shaped, linear, trigonal pyramid, trigonal planar, and tetrahedral, how you actually draw those using what's called the valence shell electron pair repulsion model. So, um, and why some of them, for example, like the PCl3, why the chlorines are below it, but in boron BCl3, the chlorines are equally spaced. That will help you with that video. As always, if you've got any um, questions about this one, please ask, and uh, thanks for watching.